Okay, hi everyone, uh, Daryl here. So this is lesson 48 in my Investing 101 playlist and today we're going to talk about price to earnings ratio. Uh, this is a continuation from last week's lesson which is earnings per share. So we're going to use earnings per share to try to calculate earnings, a price to earnings ratio. Okay, so um, some people may be familiar with uh, this term called PE ratio. So you go to like um, you go to like Yahoo Finance or you go to like Google Finance, right? Then you or like CNBC, then you you go to a particular stock ticker, then you will see this thing called PE ratio. Uh, so I would say that I myself look at PE ratio uh, rather extensively to try to compare uh, between different companies. So which uh, which uh, which companies uh, stock I'm interested in. Okay, so. Like P ratios are used to compare between different company shares or to compare the same company against its historical record. So you can uh, see your P ratio from the past, then you compare it to the current P ratio. So the P ratio formula is actually this, so which is market value per share. So you go and see the market value of the share currently. Okay, so a lot of you guys, right, you notice that if you go to uh, go to maybe like uh, I mean, you go to the stock market, then you see the price there, right? That's not that's not the price that you are going to sell your share at, okay? So that is your last transacted price. So a lot of people, very funny, uh, they always go to the stock market, then they see, wow, now, uh, now DBS is like $20. Wow, I can, I my, my share is worth $20. Your share is not worth $20. Your share is just worth whatever that you can sell at that point in time when you want to sell. So that is actually the last transacted price. If you guys are familiar with how uh, property transactions are done. So in Singapore, we have this thing called the, the Urban Redevelopment Authority or URA puts up the past transacted prices, right? So it puts up the past transacted prices on their website. So for those prices, right, like for example, today, um, I mean, I'm actually recording this like one week ago. So now it's actually 13th of April, right? I see SIA price at $6.13. Uh, as in the market is really closed. Okay, so $6.13 means the last done, right? The last transacted uh, was actually at $6.13. Tomorrow, can you sell it at $6.13, right? That's a whole different other issue. So if overnight, right, the, the, there's some adverse news about SIA, then tomorrow you will not open at $6.13. It may open at $5.80 because people are not willing to take it at $6.13. $6.13 was the last done just before the market closed on a Monday afternoon. Okay, so the market value, typically what we do is that we just take it as the last done, okay? So last done for SIA is actually uh, $6.13 today. So a high PE ratio could mean that the stock is overvalued. So if your market value per share is very high, but your earning per share is very low, so obviously your PE ratio is uh, very high, right? Because the numerator is very high, then the denominator is very low. So when you big number divide by small number, you get a big number. Okay, so it could also mean that investors think that the company will do it well in future. So it doesn't mean that the PE ratio is very high. Okay? Then you say, oh, this company definitely cannot, cannot buy it. In fact, all those growth stocks, right, their PE ratio is normally quite high. Okay, so uh, for example, right, I use the same example for SIA. Uh, SIA has a last traded price of $6.13. Sing dollars, uh, okay, this is actually on the Singapore Stock Exchange. Uh, it's under this uh, ticker code of C6L.SI and has an earnings per share of uh, 61 cents. So what you do, right? Uh, EPS, right? Earnings per share, I did it on my last video. So you guys can go to my last video and see how to calculate EPS. Okay, so the PE ratio, right, is actually 6.13 divided by 0 0.61, which is 10.049. Okay, so what you do right now is that if you go to SIA, then you see, wow, uh, SIA has a PE ratio of 10.049. But what does that mean to you? It doesn't mean anything. Because you have you have no metric to compare it to. So normally what you do, right, is that maybe you open up SIA. So you see the PE ratio of uh, about 10. Then you open up maybe like DBS. Then you see the PE ratio of about 7.8. So all things else the same, right? Uh, DBS is considered a cheaper stock to SIA. Okay, all this being the same, uh, but I will use the next slide right, to understand what I, what I mean by this. Okay, uh, this uh, forward earnings, right? So this forward, forward earnings. Uh. Okay, so P got uh, forward PE uh, 
and then after that, uh, it's alright, I just leave it as it is. So got forward PE and then got trading PE. So forward, forward price to earnings ratio, right, is a metric used for future earnings. So some people, I mean some companies, right, they will do announcement on on the uh, they they need to do like reports, right? So they will send out investor reports so that so they will actually have one forward PE and trading PE. So the one that you see on like. Uh, CNBC or Yahoo, right? Those are trading PE. Trading means what? So there's this thing, uh, you see PE ratio TTM, right? What, what does TTM mean? It, it stands for trailing 12 months. So the last 12 months, this is the PE ratio. So this is the most uh, fundamental one, which means that it actually takes actual figures to calculate this PE ratio. Then what they'll do, right, is that they'll have guidance. So they will say that uh, next year, right, we expect to earn a uh, certain amount of money. Then based on that, right, our forward PE is how much. So these are these are why sometimes, uh, hey, how come the stock didn't do very well? I mean, the company didn't do very well. Then how come the stock price go up? Right? US uh, always have this one. Then because uh, they will have this earnings guidance in future, then they'll say, oh, we expect to earn this amount of money. So you can actually see the forward PE and the trading PE and then you can try to make an uh, understanding of whether you think that this makes sense. Because because of the forward PE, right, maybe they do it until very positive, right? Then in future, in future when they uh th then the stock price immediately go up. But also what they can do, right, is that their forward PE uh, they try to mitigate, means that try to lower the expectation. Then when they beat the expectation, right, the stock price jump later. So sometimes uh, you need to be wary, like we are just normal, typical, uh, like over at home, uh, we are just buying stock. Uh. So we must understand that uh, we, are, we are not gurus, we are not computer experts where we write programs to help us trade. Uh, so we need to understand all these intrinsic reasons, right? Why things happen and, and why is it that certain price movements act in a certain way. Okay, and this is very prevalent, especially in the US stock market. So they always have this earnings guidance, earnings guidance. Then if the earnings guidance is very aggressive, right? Then uh, the uh, Wall Street takes it for what it, what it is in most instances and then prices go up. So there's a lot of, I would say manipulation, but there's a lot of uh, exuberance in the market, which has already been around for maybe the last six to seven years, which is why to be honest, I'm not very invested uh, during the last, uh, I mean, for quite some time, uh, I'm not very invested. But maybe now when things start to, when prices start to come down and make a little bit more sense, right? Uh, like these are all like uh, understanding valuations. That's why even when we buy property, right? We need to understand the intrinsic value of the property. Okay, don't come and tell me, say uh, you can, uh, property in the long run will, 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 will always increase. Uh, like I always tell people, long run means what? One year, two year, ten year, five year, fifty years also consider long run. Uh. Then ten years down the road, I come back to the property agent. The property agent say, long run will make money. Then ten years down the road, I go down to him. I say, hey, have you make money? He say, oh, never mind. Uh, my long run means thirty years. What does long run mean? Okay, so it doesn't mean anything. When we do investments, we must always have a uh, time frame and we must always analyze intrinsic value of a certain item, okay? So typically, right, if you look at this SIA, so SIA has a, a PE ratio of uh, 10.049, but now DBS Holdings, right, based on uh, today's stock price is 19.28 as a earnings per share, trading 12 months of 2.46, so its PE ratio is about 7.8. But can we, Use SIA EPS, uh, eight, uh, sorry, SIA PE ratio of uh, 7.82 versus S, uh, SIA, sorry, SIA PE ratio of 10.049 versus DBS Holdings PE ratio of 7.82 and compare like that. Cannot, okay? Because PE ratio should not be used solely on its own, okay? It is useful when comparing within sectors, which means that if we are comparing DBS to OCBC and UOB, yes, we can use PE ratio to say which one of these bank stocks may be 
uh, a little bit overpriced. But even then, he does not put the full picture. Okay, so what does UOB have on his books? What does OCBC have on his books? What does DBS have on his books? If all the P ratio is all about the same, it's all close to DBS group holdings of 7.82, then it's a toss up of you understanding what is on their books and their guidance 12 months moving forward. You read already, you understand. It may be, it makes sense. OCBC may be more secure. I'm not saying go and buy OCBC. Uh. I'm just saying example. Or maybe UOB is a better, better bet than DBS. But if DBS is at 7.82, then OCBC and UOB are so far away from DBS. Either a lot lower PE ratio or a lot higher PE ratio, then we can actually uh, zoom down and try to understand why is it that DBS is at this price. Is it, is it affordable or is it very overpriced for some reason? Okay, so a PE ratio cannot be used solely on its own. And for companies that are not profitable, right, PE ratio is negative. Or some people just don't have this metric. They just put it as zero. Okay, but when you all want to buy stock, right, a P ratio is very important. So like for example, now, now uh, when uh, SIA is issuing new stock, is getting, uh, is allotting new shares to try to raise money. What does that mean? It creates more and more shares. Okay, so does that make sense? If it makes sense, go ahead and buy. But uh, from uh, EPS, earnings per share and PE ratio, right? You should have a better understanding and better appreciation of how stock prices are, are priced on the stock market. So last time you need to calculate all this on your own. But now currently, right, with like Yahoo Finance, Google Finance, CNBC, Bloomberg, all these type of things, right? You can get all these figures uh, at the at your fingertips. So you just go on to like all these various platforms. Maybe I do just do like one one video or something like that on showing you guys everything. But try to understand these two, uh, uh, these two metrics, and they are quite important when you try to understand, uh, when you try to understand the stock market, and try to make sense of all the prices out there. Okay, so uh, that's all from me, and I'll see you guys at the next video, and stay safe, everyone.